find this year's Puka Nakua? We're talking about that in today's video. As always, give us a like and subscribe. We put out Dynasty content all year long. And in today's video, we're talking about players that I think have a really good chance of not being drafted in your Dynasty rookie drafts and players that you should target when the waiver wires open up. You should target and add to your team, stash on your taxi squad, whatever you can do to get these players on your team. You should try and do it. Now, is it likely we find someone like Puka Nakua, a fifth or sixth round pick who goes, goes on to be top five in their position? Very, very unlikely. But there are some players that I think, again, probably won't be drafted or potentially couldn't be, won't be drafted that will have a lot of value in my opinion. So we're starting off at the running back position and that's who I have the most of is the running back position, which makes sense. Kamani Vidal, round six of the Chargers. Now he's, he's one of the players that I actually think has a really, really good chance of being drafted. But I want to throw his name out there just in case he's not. If he's not drafted, you should be going out there and adding him to your team right away, right after the draft if you can. Kamani Vidal, as you see by his numbers in 2023, super, super productive, over 1,600 yards rushing, uh, 15 total touchdowns. In all four years at Troy, the dude was just productive. He just produced. His freshman year, his first, second years, he produced. His last two years, he produced a lot. He goes to the Chargers, a team that's going to run the ball hell of a lot so even the rb2 for the chargers is probably going to be fantasy relevant in my opinion um and you look at the chargers depth chart it's like okay gus edwards 29 years old he'll probably lead the team in carries but you know beyond 2024 what do we have uh jk dobbins coming off an achilles you know back-to-back -back major injuries and in, in acl and then an achilles very unlikely that he is even productive you know isaiah spiller is still there but he hasn't done anything this is John Harbaugh, you know, this is one of his guys at the Combine. He was interviewing Kamani Vidal. He really liked him. So um, I think it was kind of on his draft board all along to take Kamani Vidal, and they got him. Now, round six pick, likely he doesn't hit, but I'm going to take a chance on a running back uh, going to the Chargers. A guy that, if you go back and look at some of my Dynasty rookie profiles, I made a video on Kamani Vidal back in January, February, talking about how much I like him. So take a... Um, Add Kamani Vidal either late in your dynasty rookie drafts or as an undrafted free agent. Next up, another running back here. I have Michael Wiley. Um, he goes undrafted to the commanders, which was probably to be expected. Uh, you see his numbers there. He was kind of a hybrid, more of a hybrid back in my opinion. Um, but he is maybe um, the most or the best pass catching running back He's up there, maybe top five, best pass catching running back in this draft class. I think that's his role, in my opinion, is as a pass catcher. He goes to Washington and he sits behind Austin Eckler. I know Brian Robinson's there, but he sits behind Austin Eckler. He can learn from Austin Eckler. And then, you know, when Austin Eckler moves on in a year or two, Michael Wiley could potentially take over as that third down pass catching back. I think he's just very, very talented as a pass catcher. So PPR leagues, obviously deeper dynasty leagues, stash Michael Wiley. If you have a taxi squad, you know, he could take over as a third down guy uh, as soon as, you know, this year, if Eckler gets hurt. Another running back here, Isaiah Davis um, goes round five to the Jets. From South Dakota State, monster, monster numbers, as you can see. You know, we're talking about, uh, what, almost 1,800 total yards and 19 touchdowns. I think he can be an all-around running back. I really, really liked his his tape when watching him. thought he was a very, very talented player. You know, he's six foot, 218. He has everything you kind of need to be a workhorse running back. He runs in the mid four fives. Uh, again, super, super productive, just really good between the tackles. Um, you know, he doesn't have the elite long speed necessarily, but that's okay. Um, obviously he played against lower competition, which is always can be a concern. Doesn't mean everything, but can be a concern. We'll need to learn how to pass black block, especially if he's, you know, Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback. Um, now he goes to the jets, not the greatest spot, not only because Brees Hall's there and, and no one's going to take over Brees Hall. Brees Hall is going to be playing 80% of the snaps in my opinion, but there's, there's a battle for the RB2 spot. Now, what's going to make him go undrafted is a couple things. One, they took Braylon Allen a round before in the fourth round the Jets did. Uh, they also drafted Israel Banikanda um, last year in the fifth round. So there's those these three guys, Isaiah Davis, um, Israel Banikanda, and um, Braylon Allen are all going to be fighting for that RB2 spot. Personally, I think there's a chance that it is Isaiah Davis. I think he's just maybe better than both those guys. Is it likely? Is it more likely going to be Braylon Allen? Probably, but 
you know, I'm going to stash him, hold on to him, see how training camp plays out. If he's the RB2, there's going to be a lot of value to be the RB2 on any team. RB2s need to be rostered. So Isaiah Davis has a pretty good chance, in my opinion. Um, Next up, still continuing with the running backs, we have Blake Watson. Again, we just talked about um, Michael Wiley and his potential as a as a um, pass catcher. Blake Watson, he's up there as one of the best pass catching running backs in this draft class. Again, you see his stats out of Memphis um, over almost, what is it, over 1,600 total yards, including 53 catches, which is insane for a running back in college to have 53 catches. Um, just for reference, Jameer Gibbs, who everyone talked about his receiving ability, I think he had like 40 something his last year at Alabama. So um, 53 catches is insane. The dude, again, one of the best pass catchers in this draft class. He goes to the Broncos and Sean Payton. And Sean Payton loves his running backs. He loves finding the hidden gems. You know, guys like uh guys like that that you can um you can find, you know, late in drafts. He doesn't really care where you were drafted, is what I'm trying to say. And and Blake Watson, yeah, Javante Williams is there. Yeah, they have Julio McLaughlin. Yeah, they drafted Audric Estime. But again, it doesn't really matter for Sean Payton. If you are good, he's going to find a spot for you. Look at Julio McLaughlin last year, who was also undrafted, I believe. Maybe super late, but undrafted, I believe. And he started implementing him into, their, into, the, uh, into the game plan. So Blake Watson... Um, could be a dual role guy, but can definitely get on the field as a pass catcher. Love um, his instincts. Um, I love how he can make people miss. You know, he runs, um, I think, a 4 3 9 is what, I, if I remember correctly. And again, he's a former wide receiver. So Memphis is kind of known for these guys, you know, Tony Pollard, Antonio Gibson, guys that are really good pass catchers, kind of hybrid receiver running backs. And, and they've done well in the NFL. Um, so. Blake Watson, just look out there. If he's out there, maybe stash him, see how this season plays out. And um, I think my second to last running back here is Tyrone Tracy, um, drafted in the round five to the Giants. This is another player like Kamani Vidal that I think has a really good chance of being drafted. But in case he isn't, I think you should go out and get him. Uh, you see his numbers there. Um 113 carries, over 700 yards, 19 catches, 132 yards. He is a converted um, wide receiver. And he's very interesting because he spent six years in college, six years. So he's going to actually be 25 during the NFL season, which is a big reason why he dropped teams. Don't like to draft, especially running backs at the age of 24, 25, you know, he spent six years in college, part of it because he transitioned from wide receiver to running back. Um, last year was kind of his only year where he was like really used heavily as a running back. And he goes to the Giants, and there's an opportunity there. They have Devin Singletary and Eric Gray, but that's it. That's all they have. And I, I like Devin Singletary. I think he's a nice, solid player. I don't necessarily, if everyone's healthy, Devin Singletary probably leads the Giants in the backfield. But, I mean, Tyrone Tracy could come on, could show his ability. Um, you know, I think he's a very gifted pass catcher, which Devin, Sing Devin Singletary is not, in my opinion. He's this fine pass catcher, but he's not this talented guy. So I think there's a role for Tyron Tracy um, to, to carve out and, you know, injuries, all these things can happen. Again, you want every single RB2 or even RB3 who, where it's not even clear who the RB2 is. You want all these guys on your team because we see it year after year. Who's the number one waiver wire ad every week in fantasy football. It's the running back who's the running back uh it's it's the backup running back to the running back that got hurt that week right always it's never the wide receiver for it's always the running back that went down who his backup is so tyron tracy could find himself in that position and last but not least i have rasheen allen who gets drafted to um the ravens in round five now um i don't really see uh sorry rasheen ali i i, I don't know if i said allen uh rasheen ali um I don't really see him being drafted a whole lot. Maybe he sneaks into the fourth round of dynasty rookie drafts, but I like Rasheen Ali. Um, I know it's a, people are a little bit like, well, it's the Ravens. Do they need a running? They kind of do. You got Derrick Henry, who's up there in age now. You know, he's an alien, so he's probably going to be healthy, but he's up there in age. Um, you have Keaton Mitchell, who's coming off a pretty bad knee injury. You know, Justice Hill is still there. There's a path for Rasheen, Rasheen Ali to be the RB2 behind Derrick Henry, at least to start the season. You see his numbers there. Um, he's kind of an all-around 
a dual dual role running back, in my opinion. Uh, maybe he just returns kicks for them, but um, that's always a possibility. Uh, but you see um, his numbers again over what almost fourteen hundred total yards, sixteen touchdowns. Uh, I think he can catch the ball pretty well. He has really really good athletic skills. You know, he he runs a low four four. Um, he can kind of jump out of the uh, jump out of the gym, as they say. He's that one cut type of runner. You see the hole and go. You know, and 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 those type of runners, um, they can be successful for sure. Now. Um, he can be a little bit impatient and all of that. Doesn't have the top end speed, but man, I like Rasheen Ali. I like the position he's in. Maybe not for 2024, but for 2025 and beyond. Like I want the running back for the Raiders, uh, Ravens. Right? We saw what Gus Edwards fell into the end zone 12 times. You know, like um, yeah, they might not put up top five numbers, but the running back for the Ravens is always going to be a top 20 running back every year. Whoever's going to lead that team and carries. So Rasheen Ali, if he's out there, give him a stash, especially if you have Derrick Henry on your team. Now we're getting into the wide receiver position. Um, a couple wide receivers here um, that I like. Only three. Again, running backs are a lot easier to find, um, you know, because they're they hit the hit rate for running backs drafted in day three is way better than wide receivers. Um, Anaya Smith is uh, someone that's on my radar. He goes fifth round to the Eagles. He was someone that I was starting to like more and more as we got closer and closer to the draft. I heard some well-respected people talk about him and his potential. He's another one of these hybrid running back, started off as a running back or, you know, would played running back one year, went back to wide receiver. Um, he's really, really fun to watch if you watch his tape. Now, very inconsistent, um, very, very inconsistent but he's built a little bit like a running back, not like a huge running back, but he is built like a running back. He's like five, five, nine, 200, I think. Um, and I think he's going to fit in at the slot. I think he's probably going to return kicks uh, for the Eagles as well. Obviously you have a, a crowded receiving room with AJ Brown, Devonte Smith, um, uh, Dallas Goddard. Uh, they also drafted uh, the name slipping my, my mind right now. Oh, uh, Johnny Wilson, um, you know, Devonte Parker's there. So I don't expect much from 2024 from him, but just go and watch his tape. And there's some things that really do jump off the board. You know, he runs in the, in the four fours. Uh, again, he plays like a running back, which is always fun for me. These guys that can, you know, he got five carries in college, but he also had a, a season where uh, he put up a lot more um, carries as a running back. Um, I like these, um, I like these guys that are versatile, right? That can be moved all over the field, play in the slot, line up in the backfield. I, I'm kind of a sucker for these guys. Most of the time they don't turn out to be anything, but I like it. I, I like that versatility. He's a really good yards after the catch type of guy. Uh, I think he, he can win in multiple phases of the game. You know, he can receive special teams rushing. He's just going to be on the field for the Eagles, whether he's making a fantasy impact or not, I'm not sure. But again, what, how I think about it with this new kickoff rule, it's going to open the open the window, open the door for a lot of these players who might not have made rosters before. And if you get a guy who's returning kicks and looking awesome in the kick return game, you're probably going to give him a chance to prove himself on the field as well at some point in his in in the next couple of years, right? Obviously, you don't want to hurt your kick returner, but you're going to give him a chance. Like, hey, this guy looks awesome with the ball in his hands. Why don't we do that when we're on when we're on offense? That's just my thinking. Be fun to watch to see how uh, the kickoffs um, definitely uh, how they affect you know fantasy and in dynasty football. Um, but Anaya Smith is is definitely a guy that I'm a little bit high on. By the way, I'm not really. Um, uh, all these guys on this list are like almost all of them are like round five or later. You know, there's a couple exceptions here and there, but you know, I assume especially receivers drafted in the third and fourth round um, are most of them are going to be drafted. Um, so that's why all these guys are kind of round five or later. There's one round four guy I have here is Jacob Cowing, uh, goes to the 49ers, uh, fourth, uh, in the fourth round, you see his numbers there. Another player that's just so productive in college, like super, super productive, uh, at Arizona. Um, and not just for one year, he played at UTEP. He played at Arizona. It didn't matter where he went. The dude was putting up like monster, monster numbers. Uh, he probably fits in as just a slot guy. But uh, obviously, he, he's not going to do much in, in year one when you have Ayuk, Kittle, Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, you know, Ricky Pearsall they drafted in the first round. Cowing's probably not going to do much. He's a smaller guy. He's like 5'8", 
170 pounds, but man, is he fun to watch just like can't catch him in a phone booth type of player, really good speed in the, in the high four threes. Um, just super good twitch lateral ability, start and stop, you know, fits perfectly into the slot in my opinion. Um, and things change so much in football. Like I know right now, and I don't really see the 49ers moving off of either Debo or Ayuk. They, they, they want to win the Super Bowl. I know they were rumored to do it, but now that, you know, the draft has passed and you can't get someone, I don't think they're going to trade Ayuk or Debo for future draft capital. Um, they want to win this year. So, uh, but in 2025, can they afford to pay all these guys? That's why they drafted Ricky Pierce on the fourth. And that's why they took Jacob Cowing in the, in or sorry, Ricky Pierce on the first and why they took Jacob Cowing uh, in the fourth round, because they know there's going to be some turnover for the receiver room. They need to replenish that. Again, Kittle's getting older. McCaffrey's getting older. Debo and IU, you know, might not be able to pay them. So Jacob Cowing is an interesting one to me, you know, potentially stash on a taxi squad. Um, uh, if you can, if you have that for a year. And then last but not least, my favorite, if you want a, a Puka Nakua potential guy, this is my guy. This is my guy. In terms of receiver, he's my guy. It's Jordy, uh, sorry, Jordan Whittington from Texas. I love this guy. Man, just go, again, go and watch this guy's film. He just can eat you up in the slot better than almost anyone in this draft. He's 6'1", 205. You know, he has good speed. Um, he goes to the Rams, funny enough. Like, that's kind of a coincidence. But Rams in the sixth round, who they found Cooper Cup in the third round. They found Kyron Williams in the fifth round. They found Puka Nakua in the fifth round. I trust the Rams more than most teams to find offensive talent. Now, does that mean he's going to hit? No. But, man, Jordan Whittington is super, super fun to watch. Just go and watch his film. His catch and run ability is insane. Um, he's kind of a violent runner. Um, he's... People talk about how smart he is and just kind of understanding the position and finding the holes in the zone, um, can catch the ball in traffic, good yards after the catch. Um, you know, is he going to be able to separate vertically? Probably not. Um, so I don't really see him winning in that way. But um, man, in the slot, I can see this guy making an impact in 2024. Just think about the Rams depth chart. Just think about it. You have Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, I'm just double checking, uh, is over 30 years old. Cooper Cup will be 31 in about a month. And he's been injured the last two years. Obviously, I have Puka Nakua there. Their, our, their wide receiver three right now is Demarcus Robinson, who looked good uh, for, what, the last six six weeks of the season last year or, or so. But don't forget that Demarcus Robinson was in the league since 2016, and he had never put up more than 500. He still hasn't put up more than five. He's never had a stretch except for that stretch with the Rams. Okay. Tutu Atwell's there. Sure. Um, Tutu Atwell got replaced by Demarcus Robinson, um, you know, in week 12 or whatever it was. So what I'm trying to say is, is it crazy to think that Jordan Whittington could be impactful, could be on the field? The Rams don't care where you were drafted as long as you're good. Could he get on the field? Could he win the third receiver slot position? Sure. Why not? I love Jordan Whittington. I think he's awesome. Maybe he's going to help him in the kick return. I don't know. But, man, this is my pick for, like, a Puka Nakua a player no one's talking about. Drafted in the day three, you know, round six. Um, going to a, you know, a situation where maybe you don't think he's going to thrive and he just – he could be awesome. He could really be awesome. That's it for the receivers. Um, just have one quarterback here real quick, Michael Pratt. Um, you know, early on in the draft process, if you were paying attention in January, February in mock drafts, Michael Pratt was like up there with, you know, after the top six guys, after Bo Nix and Michael Penix, it was okay. Who's next. And it was like Spencer Rattler and Michael Pratt were kind of interchangeable. I saw him as high as like round three in the in round three of mock drafts. Obviously he went all the way into the seventh round with the Packers. Um, I'm not saying Michael Pratt's going to be this amazing quarterback. He's not going to beat out Jordan Love or anything. But go look at the Packers' depth chart real quick. Um, they don't really have a, uh, a backup quarterback that you would feel great with. They have Sean Clifford and Alex McGo, McGow, 
That's their that's their two quarterbacks, and then Michael Pratt. So I think Michael Pratt could win the uh, the QB two spot. I think he's going to be one of these quarterbacks that just play for ten years, and you're like, Michael Pratt's still in the league. We're talking about him in 2030. Like, oh, he's still in the league when he gets his opportunity. If he has to fill in for a, a game or two, that's the kind of, you're, you're fine with it. Anything longer than that, you don't really want him uh, starting more than a couple games. But if he does and comes in, like he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be smart. He doesn't have the arm talent, I think, to be a starter, but. Um, he could just be a really nice backup quarterback. And in super flex leagues, that's valuable. The QB twos, as we saw from last year, over 60 quarterbacks played last year, started a game. So, um, you know, the QB twos should be drafted in almost every, from every team in super flex league. So Michael Pratt, I think could be the QB two for a really good offense in the Packers, by the way. Um, now um, we are uh, getting into the tight ends. I only have one round four tight end. Um, and honestly, you can kind of, any of those round four tight ends, I think could be considered. If they don't get drafted, I would consider stashing them. Um, I'm talking about uh, Jatavian Sanders, um, Theo Johnson, who I'm going to talk about right now, um, uh, Eric All, AJ Barner, Kate Stover, Jared Wiley. Those guys were all fourth round picks. If none of them get drafted and you want to stash a tight end on your taxi, any one of those guys will work. I wanted to highlight Theo Johnson. Um, he's maybe the most athletic tight end in this draft class. Um, the dude's like numbers are kind of like off the chart. And that's including Brock Bowers, by the way. Um, the dude just like his, his shuttle, his 40 yard times good. His vertical is really good. Um, just everything about him. His 10 yard split is awesome. He's just like an athletic freak. A lot of people at, um, who are Penn state fans just said, man, why didn't we use this guy more? Like, why didn't we use this guy more? You see his numbers, nothing to write home about. Seven touchdowns is nice, but only 34 catches, 341 yards. And um, yeah, again, people are just kind of saying like, why was this guy not used more, right? Um, it's not like their team was stacked with with receiving talent or anything. So I like to take chances on super athletic guys. Um, by the way, he was, even with 341 yards, he was third on the team in receiving yards and their number one receiver in receiving yards had 673 yards. So they just didn't throw the ball a lot, but man, um, I like to take chance, take chances. It's already going to be, you know, a tight end draft in the fourth round, fifth round, unlikely they hit, but I like to take chances on, um, on athletic guys. And I think Theo Johnson's that again, goes to the giants. Darren Waller, I think is retiring. I know it's not official, but I'm pretty sure he is. I think he's, Theo you know, Johnson's better than Daniel Bellinger. And we could just be talking about, and just think about the Giants in general. Yeah, they have Malik Neighbors. Who's their number two option? Like by by default, it's, you know, these guys like Slayton and stuff like that. But there's really no solid number two option there. What if it's the tight end? What if it's Theo Johnson? So um, I would take a chance on him over most of the other fourth round picks. Um at the tight end position. But again, if any of those guys go undrafted and you want to stash a tight end, I think any of them are kind of fine. Um, next up, I have Tanner McLaughlin uh, goes six round to the Bengals. And I wanted to highlight him. Now the Bengals, again, they drafted Eric all out of Iowa in the fourth round. And then they drafted Tanner McLaughlin in the sixth round. And this reminds me a little bit of um, Luke Musgrave and uh, Tucker craft. Luke Musgrave was drafted in the second Tucker Craft drafted in the third, and everyone took Luke Musgrave. Everyone took Luke Musgrave, right? No one even thought about Tucker Craft. No one even thought about him. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, Tucker Craft has like just as good of a chance as Luke Musgrave to be good and to be the tight end one. And it kind of played out that way. I know it's because Musgrave got hurt, but Tucker Craft came in and just did what Musgrave was doing to start the year. I kind of think of the same here. Now, if I had to choose, I'd choose Eric Hall, right? But Tanner McLaughlin, if you, you know, if you don't get one of those round four guys for whatever reason, Tanner McLaughlin is a decent stash in my opinion, uh, because Cincinnati wants tight end help. Um, if you kind of just look at their, uh, look at their depth chart a little bit, and I'm just going to pull it up. Real quick, um, you got Mike Kosecki, Tanner Hudson, um, and then, you know, the guys they drafted. Um, good good players and things like that, but I think they're looking for a consistent tight end option. Uh, Burrow and Tanner Hudson have kind of had a nice co connection there before the, the few games before Burrow got hurt. Um, and so um, 
you know, I think that's interesting as well. And so I'm just saying, take a, take a chance on Tanner McLaughlin, who put up really good numbers at Arizona. 45 catches, 528 yards, and four touchdowns is good for a college tight end. Um, and then last on this list, we have Dallin, I believe is how you say it, Holker. He played at um, Colorado State and BYU. And I really liked him as like, you know, I kind of had him ranked as a top seven or eight tight end, you know. Uh, this tight end class was a little bit tough after Brock Bowers, but I kind of had him ranked a little bit higher. Now he's not this amazing um, necessarily athlete. He did have a good th- uh, shuttle and broad jump. You see his numbers there, 64 catches, almost uh, over 750 yards and six touchdowns is is really, really nice uh, numbers. I think he can, he can just be kind of that move the chain, uh, red zone type of threat. Um, for the Saints, by the way, he goes undrafted to the Saints. Now, he's undrafted. And undrafted tight ends almost never hit. Although, I actually think, I don't think any of them have hit, except for like Antonio Gates, right? Um, It's very rare that an undrafted tight end will hit. Uh, I I think there's a couple more that now that I'm remembering. But anyways, it's very rare. But he goes to the Saints, and you just, off the top of your head, who's the Saints tight end one? Well, you're probably going to say Juwan Johnson, and, and you'd be right. You know, Taysom Hill's there, Foster Moreau's there. Are, are any of those guys like the clear cut? No, nope, no one can beat them out. No, not at all. He's just a solid receiver, finds the soft spot in zones really nicely. Um, Saints didn't really do much in the draft to upgrade their wide receiver position. So there's still kind of like a lack of who's the wide receiver two definitive number two or even number three target for them. So it could be the tight end. And what if Holker wins out? You know, what if he wins out? Now, he's not super athletic, but you just watch his tape and the guy's just, he's just a tight end. Like, he's when you think of just like solid, non-athletic tight ends, he comes to mind. So there you have it, guys. A long list of players that you can't add them all, most likely. But man, you should be adding a couple of these guys, if you, especially if you're in a rebuild. Who knows if they hit? Who knows if it's, um, if it's Puka Nakua or Keaton Mitchell or whoever, whoever it is, right? Um Hopefully you find one of them. Hopefully even just a couple of these guys hit and, uh, you know, we're all laughing our way to the bank. So give us a like and subscribe as always. We'll catch you guys all in the next video.